right. All right, we're gonna move on to uh, a lesson on volume of cylinders. But before we do, I wanna remind you of um, the things you learned about circles last year in seventh grade, um, because we have to use that idea to do volume of cylinders. Um, you learned last year that, that the pi is a constant ratio and that it comes from the, the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter is gonna give you the ratio of pi, that constant ratio. So if, if you take the circumference of the circle divide by the diameter, you're gonna get pi. So this divided by this gives you pi. And you learned last year that using the exact form of pi is the only way to get the exact answer. The other methods that we use are gonna be approximations or the other forms of pi that we use are gonna be approximations. Sometimes we use 3.14. Sometimes we use 22 over seven, and sometimes we use the pi key on the calculator. But for the ones that we're gonna do um, today, we're gonna use either pi or we're gonna use 3.14, and every once in a while, 22 over seven. Okay, so let's just review that real quick, how we find the area of a circle, because we're gonna need to know area of a circle to be able to find volume of the cylinder. So the formula for area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Now let's remember what the radius is. If we have a circle, the radius is from any point in the center, or not any point in the center, there is a center point, from there to any point on the edge. So this is a radius, this is a radius, this is a radius. All of these would be a radius all the way through is a diameter. So we need halfway, we need from the center to the edge to be able to use this formula. So if this circle has a diameter of four meters, then what would the radius be? It's gonna be two because it's half of the diameter. So we would use this formula. This formula is like a recipe. It's gonna tell you exactly the steps if you'll write it down. I'll say that one more time. If you'll write it down, it makes it so much easier to avoid mistakes. So you're gonna use pi, and in place of radius, you're gonna put two meters. And so all I've done is substitute in radius in place of the R in the formula. So I'm gonna find the area like this. Pi times, well, what is two meters times two meters? It's four meters squared. So if I want to find the exact area of a circle, I can just multiply these things. Now, if I'm going to use the pi symbol, remember we treat it kind of like a variable. It's going to be four pi meters squared. Now, if I were going to do that problem and use 3.14, I would put 3.14 in place of the pi symbol and I would have a different answer. I wouldn't use the pi symbol. So let's do one like that. Let's do a different problem. We'll use the same formula. Area is equal to pi times the radius squared. It's always helpful to write the formula down again before you plug the numbers in. You're less likely to make mistakes. So let's say we have a circle that has a radius of six inches. So I'm gonna put six inches in place of that. Now I didn't need a half at that time because I didn't have the diameter, I had the radius. So the area is gonna be equal to, this time I'm gonna use 3.14 for pi, and I'm gonna put in six inches for the radius, and I'm gonna square that. So the area is gonna be 3.14 times 36 square inches because six squared is 36 and inches squared. So this is gonna be 36 square inches. Now it's time to get the calculator because I'm not using just the pi symbol, I'm gonna need the calculator now and I'm gonna multiply 3.14 times 36 and I'm gonna get 113.04. Sometimes you're asked to round that, but we're gonna keep all of this one. 113.04 inches squared. Remember, it's area, so we're always going to do that in squared dimensions. Anytime you're finding area, it's always going to be in squared dimensions. 